next session which is about high performance additives for architectural coatings from Solvay and for that may I please uh, request Mr. Pankesh Thora to join us on stage as I request Mr. Neerav Thakkar to please join us on stage and present a bouquet to him. Yes everybody, we can hear it louder. Mr. Pankesh Thorat, who graduated with B.Tech in Surface Coating Technology from Institute of Surface Coating Technology, Mumbai in 2007. Well, he started his career with Asian Paints Research and Technology Center in 2007 as a technology officer. Worked there for three years and then moved on to join Nippon Paint in the year 2012 as a technical executive. He has since then accumulated up to nine years of technical experience in coating market and is currently based in Solvay Technical Service Center, Thane. Please give him a big hand and I hand over to you, sir. Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, I will be starting my presentation with a small introduction to uh, Solvay. Okay, uh, Solvay uh, globally is, uh, the net sales is around 13 uh, billion euro, uh, which uh, out of which uh, we have four different uh, divisions, uh, for which Europe contributes to about 34%, uh, North America 23%, Latin America 11%, and Asia Pacific 32%. So uh, these are our innovative centers uh, that we have across the globe. So in all, we have 15 major RNI centers, uh, almost 1950 uh, employees working. Uh, we have uh, uh, so far uh, 259 patents filed uh, 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 on behalf of Solvay. So uh, Solvay is actually uh, a multi-GBU uh, uh, company. We have almost 16 different GB units, uh, which include specialty polymers, coatings, uh, aroma, <coughs> engineering plastics. Uh, but where we, I, we and my uh, team belong is to the Novicare GBU. Novicare GBU, here we have specialty uh, surfactants, uh, which actually goes into different applications, uh, which has agrochemical, coatings, home and personal care, industrial, and oil and gas. These are our uh, presence in Asia. So we have different plant uh, location in Asia. We have... Uh, uh, number of plants in China. We have uh, two plants in India, uh, which are majorly the acquisition of uh, Rhodia specialty chemicals uh, and essential chemicals. This is some of our footprint in India. We have a joint venture with uh, Hikem in Ahmedabad. We have uh, our other GBU plant in Panoli, which is uh, a specialty polymer and uh, Solvay engineering plastic. We have a big RNI center where almost 200 PhDs are uh, constantly uh, doing research work on various fields. Uh, we have a small technical center in Thane Lab where I am based out of. And uh, we have two plants, that is one in Roha, which was acquired through Rhodia Specialty Chemicals, and one in uh, Rasal Sunshield Chemicals. These are actually two plants that we have in India. Uh, Roha, Rhodia Specialty Chemicals is actually uh, where we get all the anionics, where all sulfation, sulfonation, phosphation technologies are available. And in Sunshield, we, it is exclusively for alkoxylation facility, wherein we do all ethoxylation and propoxylation products. This is uh, the picture of our Solvay RNI Center, which is in Vadodara, uh, Gujarat. So today I'll be talking to you uh, on the various uh, paint additives that we offer from Solvay to make water-based architectural coatings. Uh, 
So this will be the presentation overview. I would be talking about the functional additives that we offer to make uh, green eco-friendly coatings, uh, which is uh, freeze thaw stabilizers and open time extender. There are certain deformers that we have for uh, various applications, right, from uh, adhesives to water-based paints and to ink applications. We have various weighting agents, APO-free weighting agents. We have coalescing agents, uh, which are uh, low VOC, high boiling point coalescing agents. We have uh, low odor neutralizers. And then we have color solutions, that is for pigment concentrates. These are some of our uh, product brand names and chemistries that we offer. Usually our product portfolio is divided into two categories. One is for paint additive and the other is for the binder solution. Binder solution is, win, uh, is mean uh, where we make emulsions. So we have various emulsifiers and various chemistries of emulsifier available to make emulsions. So we have Roda Surf grades, uh, which are uh, the non ionics which are AP, AP free products. We have Roda PEX, which is uh, sodium lauryl ether sulfate chemistries. We have Rodacal, sulfonates, and various other chemistries. In paint additives, as I said earlier also, I have categorized the additives into different applications, as in as deformer or dispersant or weighting agents. And the weighting agents that we uh, sell uh, in the name of IGPAL and the coalescent as Rhodia Solve, amines as Fentamine. So these are the certain chemistries of surfactant that I was talking about for the binder solution. Okay, we have certain specialty monomers to, uh, to make emulsions. Uh, reactive stabilizer, we have Cipomer COPS-1 and COPS-3. Cipomer COPS-1 is when uh, is used to get be uh, better ketal hygiene, good uh, reaction process. Uh, Cipomer COPS-3 helps to make emulsions which has for uh, high scrub resistance. Uh, we have adhesion promoters, uh, Sipomer Beta CA is specifically uh, uh, for the PSA application where uh, you want to get more peel strength and other uh, properties. We also have wet adhesion monomers, a series of wet adhesion monomers for various substrate, right from uh, wood substrates to metal substrate uh, and other substrates. So we also have phosphate based adhesion monomers for uh, water based uh, metal coatings. And then we have rheology modifiers. Uh, these rheology modifiers, these are actually a specialty monomers which are used to make haze thickeners. Now this haze thickener, uh, with the help of this uh, specialty monomer, you can make haze thickener right from pseudoplastic nature to Newtonian nature. So we have low, low viscosity haze thickener you can make and also you can make the high shear viscosity uh, haze thickener. Again, we have reactive diluent, uh, Cipomer Iboa and Iboma. This actually goes into the UV curable uh, uh, coatings. Recently, we have acquired Cytec and uh, some of the products that have now been uh, 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 will be sold under Solvay, and they have sulfosuccinate chemistry, which is the only chemistry the uh, Cytec has. And uh, uh, so they have diester sulfosuccinates, uh, various grades, uh, as you must be uh, using aerosol OT, aerosol TR, or aerosol WA300. So this actually goes into the substrate weighting kind of a weighting agent in, ver in variety of applications. Then again, we have monoesters, uh, sulfosuccinates on the half esters, what we call it as aerosol uh, EF800, aerosol E810, and aerosol A102. These are primarily used as the emulsifier to make uh, emulsions. And again, the uh, sulfosuccinates uh, is the another chemistry that is offered by the Cytec products. Now moving on to some of the uh, key products or the performance solution products uh, that we have is the freeze thaw additive. Uh, freeze thaw is a process, I mean, uh, in generally uh, in the environment where, you know, the temperature goes down and, uh, uh, and there is the freezing and then when it comes to the normal temperature, the paint gels or the emulsion gels. So this is when happens when the polymer uh, during the freezing process is, you know, uh, forced to each uh, either and the polymer particles comes together and uh, our, during thawing process, they do not go back to their real state. And that's when uh, uh, the additive uh, comes into the picture and it helps to protect the polymer particle so that you know, uh, even after the thawing process, it remains uh, protected and, uh, 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 and it gives uh, you know, good freeze thaw stability. So if you see, uh, look at this SME, uh, SME observations, so the polymer which is without the, any additive, 
if you look at uh, even after one cycle of freeze thaw, uh, it has failed. And if you look at the you know one percent FT additive, the polymer is pr properly and uh, finely dispersed into the system, means it is protecting the uh, protecting the protecting the pa pa polymer. So how FT100 is used? FT100 is again a VOC free uh, AP free liquid. Uh, it is uh, green silk appliant product. Uh, it has a novel hydrophobe chemistry which protects the polymer particle uh, and provides the freeze thaw stability. How uh, FT100 can be used? FT100 can be used for for emulsion uh, manufacturers. I mean, uh, it can be used in the post add stage. For paint manufacturers, it can be used even in the grinding stage or even in the let down stage. The another advantage, as uh, we can see with uh, FT100, is uh, uh, with addition of uh, uh, FT100, you can actually reduce the dosage of your weighting agents or the glycos that you are currently using in paint formulations. Uh, this was, this was uh, some comparison test was done uh, in a commercial paint sample. Uh, we took this sample and uh, you know we uh, usually people use glycols or non-ionics to improve the freeze thaw stability. Even in emulsion polymerization, uh, some to be, uh, I mean some customers tend to use more of the hydrophilic monomer. But there are advantages and disadvantages with the usage uh, and the type of hydrophilic monomer that you can use uh, during emulsion polymerization also. So we tried this uh, against various kind of you know uh, additives that are used for freeze thaw stability. And uh, we have found that you know uh, the FT100 passes all the five cycles, and other uh, additives that is the glycol or the non-ethanol based uh, uh, weighting agents or the non-ionics or even in the uh, linear alkyl ethoxylates, they could not pass the freeze thaw cycles. So overall, if you I could summarize FT100, so it gives high performance, delivers freeze thaw stability. Uh, it is it has a chemistry which actually enhances the gloss of the paint. Uh, it can uh, no negative impact uh, like um, uh, water sensitivity because uh, when people use glycols, uh, it has uh, you know water sensitivity issues. Uh, but with FT100, there is no such uh, drawbacks. Uh, you can actually eliminate the usage of weighting agent if you replace uh, the current weighting agent with FT100. It has excellent capability uh, compatibility with across the chemistries of emulsions. Uh, right from acrylic, vinyl acrylic, uh, or uh, styrene acrylic emulsions. And it's a sustainable solution, meaning it is eco-label compliance, it has low order additive and AP free and VOC free. <clears throat> the another product uh, which I'm talking about now is open time additive. Uh, open time is actually a very neglected property of uh, paint formulation. Uh, usually uh, during the environment where the temperature is high and the uh, humidity is very low, that is very a dry, crime, dry climate, we usually find this uh, problem of uh, drying time. So, uh, so, so even if your uh, good paint, it, it has all the properties, but if it fails in the open time, all the application errors or the application marks are there and the, and the paint is spoiled for the properties. So actually uh, uh, during this application, uh, OT500 helps to uh, improve the, uh, to increase the open time. Uh, it has a unique hydrophobe which actually retains the water molecule for a longer period of time. So it gives the open time extension. Again, OTE 500 is uh, VOC free, eco-label compliant. And uh, with OTE 500, again, you can uh, reduce the dosage or optimize the dosage of your primary dispersing and weighting agent and glycols. So it is actually a replacement for three products. You can uh, uh, reduce uh, weight dispersing agent, weighting agent, and also glycols. So this is actually uh, the test of o OTE 500. How do you come to uh, uh, know that OTE 500 is much better than uh, uh, the other products? So, so we took a commercial sample, uh, I mean uh, a control sample which does not had an OTE additive, and we compared with OTE 500. And uh, we casted a drawdown of 7 mil, and uh, after that uh, we did a cross marking and then after each time a regular interval of let's say two minutes, we did uh, the brush and uh, we, give the, we have given the uh, um, equal strokes and to see a point where we can see that cross mark, which means that the paint has actually dried at that point time. So what we have found is that with OT500, you can extend time uh, uh, where in control you get only two minutes, with, whereas with uh, OT500, you can get actually eight minutes of open time. 
this is again an experiment which was done uh, on the wall surface where uh, where you can see uh, uh, you know uh, the original sample which is without ot find it has poor overlapping between the two application and with optimized ot that is with ot 500 uh, it has good overlapping or the merging of the sample uh, merging of the pa uh, application paint there is another property of ot find it uh, being uh, uh, i mean uh, having extended ot find it there is also another uh, uh, issue that has been solved of brush clogging usually uh, during the application process painters tend to keep their brush uh, uh, in the container which is which is a diluted paint and uh, if it keep for a longer period of time the brush get coagulated and uh, then painter has to actually uh, change it over uh, a regular time but with ot find it your paint uh, since it uh, it remains uh, you know wet or uh, the open time is high the brush brush clogging issue is not there so if you could uh, if i could summarize rodelin ot 500 so it at least two fold increase in open time uh, it has better resistance to surfactant leaching it has minimal impact on dry film properties again uh, you can uh, use it in various uh, systems uh, it is apo free voc free it is eco label and gs11 compliant and uh, another adding property of brush clogging uh, uh, properties uh, performance solution uh, we have certain deformers for water based application uh, we have actually number of deformers uh, 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 so the where do we en encounter uh, foam uh, during the application so there are various sources of foam so during the latex stripping pumping of the emulsions into the reactors or during let down st uh, stages mixing stages or during application uh, when we apply uh, by uh, paint and then rolling so uh, during this time if the foam uh, is not uh, taken care of uh, then it will create surface defects so uh, actually we uh, during screening of the deforming we do a lot of uh, foaming test uh, like deforming efficiency test we do to screen various deformers for a particular application Uh, we do compatibility test that is conditioning in containers uh, we do application test that is uh, rolling and uh, we check the deforming efficiency of the deformers we do aging uh, for uh, aging test for lasting efficiency uh, we keep the deformers for longer period of time and we check the uh, efficiency or, or the efficacy of the deformers we uh, we do the shaker test so there are a lot of tests that we do while suggesting or you know um, segregating a deformer to a particular application uh rodelin df0114 is another uh, out of uh, many deformers i would discuss with df0114 is one uh, deformer which can be used for clear systems uh, uh, so like uh, if you want to make a uh, water water based uh, wood coating uh, or uh, uh, you know the, the coatings where where, where where the gloss is very important and uh, we have to maintain the high gloss so rodelin df0114 uh, is one product uh, would recommend for uh, such kind of applications Uh, there is another uh, uh, locally manufactured deformer that we have is adso foam 3001 um, this product uh, the unique uh, property of this product is it has good foam knockdown efficiency it can be used across the pvc like from low medium to high pvc systems uh, the one this one single deformer can serve the purpose so these are actually the various deformers that we have from uh, our plant we have two plant uh, one is in china and one in new zealand out of which we make deformers exclusively so these are uh, certain deformers that we promote for flat and semi gloss architectural paints uh, certain deformers for high gloss applications that is rodolin df0114 and df5642 for high viscosity paint uh, like your texture paints and other paints we have rodolin df6002 and uh, df660 and there are other uh, emulsion uh, we also have deformers for emulsion manufacturing that is latex processing where the system is different and the requirement of you know deformers is different so for that also we have certain deformers uh, we have some deformers for water based inks that is df4226 rodolin df6078 and uh, for water based adhesives we have certain deformers like df619 and uh, df642m so in fact we have uh, the deformers of uh, mineral oil based silicon based polyether based uh, so we have different chemistries of deformer available weighting agent uh, again uh, this is uh, some of the weighting agents that we have uh, like non ionic van ionic uh, the certain a certain weighting agent is for pigment we have substrate weighting agents and uh, we also have weighting agent for tio2 and the extenders
So uh, I'll talk about, I mean, uh, in Sunshield we can make, uh, I mean, uh, we have our own uh, alkoxylation facility. So we can make uh, a lot of uh, non-annex right from uh, non-ilphenol, octylphenol, cetosterile alcohols, any alcohol, uh, TDA, and any alcohol-based weighting agents, I mean, uh, non-annex we can make. So out of which, I mean, the most popular one uh, I would like to discuss is Rodoline WA9, uh, Rodoline 2809, and WA40. So, uh, the, so uh, Rodolin WA9 is actually we uh, recommend or uh, uh, customers use it for the pigment weighting uh, in architectural coatings. Rodolin WA40 is actually the st for used for stability, that is the emulsion stability. We have a very uh, specific product or weighting agent that is Rodolin 1865. This is actually goes into the gloves application, uh, that is natural gloves application. Uh, and then we have a very multifunctional uh, additive that is Rodolin WA1801. This additive <coughs> and then uh, there are certain uh, non-ionic, uh, sorry, uh, non-ilphenol based weighting agents. Uh, I mean, in India we don't have as such regulations uh, to go for APO free or uh, you know, VOC, uh, but uh, the most popular grades of weighting agent that right now the paint manufacturers are using is NP10 mole uh, uh, weighting agent. So we also have IGPAL CO640 which is made in Sunshield uh, as a uh, weighting agent that we uh, promote for architectural coatings. Uh, Alkamul's 100 uh, is another APO free weighting agent and dispersing agent uh, which we promote for making colorants and stainer. Uh, uh, APO, uh, I mean Alkamul's 100 has a, I mean uh, the product is made in such a way that its HLB is balanced so that you can make a universal uh, colorant. Uh, this, this colorant that can go into uh, your uh, uh, enamel alkyd based paint and also in your uh, water based paint. Then we have a Rodolin 6225 for universal colorant. There are certain pigments like red pigments and blue pigments where uh, you know uh, making of the universal colorant is tough and then uh, you need an enamel compatibilizer. So this additive actually enhances the tinting strength of you know your colorant and uh, makes it uh, compatible with the system. So we also have that product that is Rodolin 6225. As I was talking about, Rodolin WA1801 is a very multifunctional, you know, weighting agent. So uh, what it does, I mean, uh, it, it, does, it is a substrate weighting as well as it is a pigment weighting. So it effectively weights out titanium dioxide and other pigments and extenders in the system. So uh, what we did is, I mean, uh, this is weighting efficiency curve. If you look at the weighting efficiency of uh, WA1801 against uh, the conventional NP910 mole uh, uh, product, or the uh, dispersant. So you, if you look at the, uh, the Rodolin WA1801 uh, has the best weighting on TiO2. Uh, we also make uh, dispersing agent uh, like uh, uh, the uh, 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 sodium salt of polyacrylic acid, homopolymer or copolymer. Co so these are certain grades of dispersing agent that we have uh, for pigment uh, dispersing. So Rodolin triple one, uh, Rodolin DP226, Rodolin 286 and DP270, depending upon the nature of the dispersing agent, uh, we have four variants uh, which are available for, uh, you know, um, uh, for, for as a dispersant uh, in the architectural coatings. Uh, there is another product category that we have is coalescing agent. Uh, this is uh, a, a general pictorial uh, presentation of, you know, uh, how the, uh, uh, fan film dries or uh, water evaporates and there is a diffusion of the coating takes place. So, uh, so uh, <coughs> uh, the polymer has a certain TG, you higher the TG then it is very difficult for the uh, you know, emulsion film or to, uh, to form a film. So you require a coalescing agent to reduce the you know, uh, TG. So, uh, so you can see I mean uh, with, uh, with coalescing agent the TG has reduced and uh, uh, you know water evaporates earlier and the coalescing agent uh, evaporates at a later uh, later time uh, of the uh, paint drying. So what we have, what we have is Rhodiazol DIB. Rhodiazol DIB is a low VOC and low order uh, coalescing agent. So right now, uh, I mean, uh, there is one popular grade that uh, you know, uh, it's been widely used as a coalescing agent, but it has a typical smell. Uh, but our uh, coalescing agent uh, is as efficient as, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, leading uh, coalescing agents that are available in the market. And uh, it has no odor, absolutely no odor uh, uh, of this additive. Uh, so, I mean, uh, as I said, you know, um, enhances efficiency, hydrolytically stable, uh, and it has low odor, uh, low to zero VOC. And it, it, it has a boiling point, you know, range of 265 to 295. 
again uh, the bowling point range is a bit tricky so we have another high bowling coalescing agent so where the bowling point of the coalescing agent is slightly higher uh, than the rhodiazole dib so so again it is very low order low toxic see it is biodegradable and it has an hydrolysis stability so uh, this is the physical properties of uh, you know rhodolin cl313 uh, 3101 so it has a boiling point of 293 so definitely it uh, you know satisfy the norms of 250 and 280 degrees celsius so uh, what we have done is i mean uh, we have evaluated this uh, uh, into uh, with uh, you know two competitor samples which are very popular uh, and used into in this segment and uh, Again, as I said, uh, it is uh, CL3100 is VOC in China. It is not an VOC in Green Seal. It is not an VOC. Eco label. It is not an VOC. So, so CL3101 is the product for the high-end application where you want no no VOC, no odor. So, what we have checked, which we have checked the MFFT uh, of the two competitor samples, and uh, we have found, you know, uh, uh, in styrene acrylic emulsion and also in pure acrylic emulsion to see the efficiency, how how much uh, you know MFFT it is reduced of the polymer. So we have seen, you know, Rodolin 3101 shows better efficiency than uh, certain products like competitor 1 and competitor 2. Uh, in terms of scrub resistance, because, uh, you know, sir, uh, scrub resistance higher, uh, the coalescing agent you use, softer is the film, and then you have a blocking resistance problem or sometimes a scrub resistance issue. But uh, we have found that, you know, uh, with uh, Rodolin CL3101, uh, absolutely no effect with the scrub resistance and in fact we have found that uh, the close competitors we are still better uh, uh, with the scrub resistance property. Then another uh, product category is uh, amine neutralizers. Uh, we have Rodolin AN1301 that is uh, for amine uh, for uh, which is used as you know uh, buffer uh, in paint formulation. So uh, this product is categorized with I mean, a very popular grade uh, uh, which is currently being used AMP. So uh, this is another product. Another product what we have is Rodolin AN130. Now this product has dual functionality. I mean, uh, you can reduce uh, the dosage of your primary dispersing agent uh, with uh, with AN130. AN130. So uh, so it has dual functionality. It has uh, buffer. It it can be used as a buffer, but also can has some uh, dispersing uh, property. This is actually a very, uh, I mean, uh, new product. Uh, it is not yet commercialized, which is Rodolin AN3021, which is again a very low order and low VOC. It has a molecule which has a boiling point of uh, more than 290 degrees Celsius, so and has no alloying uh, properties. And uh, we have evaluated this in the paint system, like with ammonia, and we have two uh, taken two benchmark uh, products, and we have found that the pH uh, is achieved even at the low, less dosage of this additive. And uh, there is consistency of the pH even after the heat aging. So uh, if you could summarize uh, the performance of AN3201, it has better neutralizing efficiency than Vox 1000 and Vantex T. And uh, comparable to low high shear viscosities, it has comparable gloss and hiding properties. Uh, it has um, wet and dry adhesion, comparable block and scrub resistance. And in terms of regulatory, it is zero VOC and very low in order. The, uh, the last topic that I would be discussing is color solutions. Uh, we have uh, Rodolin 3000 series and Rodolin 4000 series. Rodolin 3000 series is the one uh, which we majorly uh, categorize for the uh, weighting and dispersing of the organic pigments. Uh, so these are various grades of Rodolin 3000 series that we have. Uh, which we recommend for uh, various organic pigments. We have uh, studied uh, this uh, Rodolin series and for, for carbon black uh, specifically if uh, we have studied and uh, our various grades for carbon black grade uh, Raven 1170 and uh, I know we could find out I mean the optimum dosage level uh, for this carbon black was 14 to 24 percent and with this data uh, we have evaluated again some of the grades from uh, uh, grades from BYK and other uh, products. That data I have, uh, but I, I could show uh, some uh, limited slides here. But um, we have all the data. So uh, for carbon black, the the, the recommended uh, dispersing agent is Rodolin 3100, uh, which uh, which we promote for uh, carbon black pigments. So this is again uh, uh, the pigment concentrate viscosities uh, that were measured, and uh, we found that you know. Rodolin 3100 gives the lowest pigment concentrate viscosity. 
uh, for making uh, pigment uh, you know paste or uh, the, the dispersions so uh, this was the formulation for uh, you know uh, the evaluation of color and uh, for various color and that we have taken uh, against rhodolin 3100 and rhodolin 3500 against the competitor so uh, this is the data of tinting strength and mass tone uh, against various uh, semi gloss white base paint uh, in flat paint in semi gloss clear paint and uh, clear flat clear base so we have evaluated uh, this color and into different uh, white base and we have checked for the tinting strength and uh, you know uh, we found out that r3100 that is rhodolin 3100 is much better than uh, some of the grades which are currently being used for dispersing of carbon black Uh, so if you could summarize i mean uh, there are different grades of carbon black for architectural grade there is raven 500 and raven 1170 for industrial grades we have different grades of which we have evaluated uh, uh, you know f171 f200 f225 and for conductive pigments also uh, carbon black uh, we have evaluated and we could uh, recommend our dosage of rhodolin 3100 for architectural coating as 15 to 20% likewise uh, we have evaluated our uh, dispersing agent into across uh, pigment and uh, we could summarize those uh, for the recommended dosage i mean uh, which product can uh, can be optimal or can be recommended for which pigment so uh, this is the summary where in uh, thalo brew uh, pb15 to uh, uh, 3100 uh, is recommended and uh, thereby we have another uh, other pigments also wherein we recommend uh, rhodolin series so in overall if you look at i mean rhodolin 3100 is one product which goes for majority of the organic pigments uh, weighting and dispersion there is another series of rhodolin uh, weighting uh, dispersing agent that we have is 4000 Uh, which is for uh, inorganic pigments so uh, uh, so you know uh, for inorganic pigments so again uh, for we have tested our rhodolin series for uh, red iron oxide uh, bay ferox grade 130 and uh, we have found uh, uh, that you know uh, rhodolin 4188 uh, was much better as compared to the other uh, rhodolin uh, rhodolin pigment rhodolin uh, dispersant we have uh, for the uh, you know uh, red oxide this is for tio2 again in this case also rhodolin 4188 was much better as compared to the other uh, uh, grades of uh, rhodolin series uh, again uh, this uh, this was the color acceptance and development uh, test that we have done um, against rhodolin 4100 as you can see there is good compatibility of colorant there is no flocculation uh, or any kind of uh, defects uh, that you could be uh, could be seen we also check the color stability because usually when uh, when we make a paint and we uh, we add color and and uh, we disperse or we uh, dilute for application after certain period of time there we can see a separation of colorant uh, or there is uh, enough flocculation of the colorant in the sample but whereas uh, if you look at these uh, um, these samples that were made with uh, rhodolin 4188 against the various competitor so we could find out that 4188 gives the uh, the uh, uh, you know the homogeneous and the perfect uh, perfect compatibility in terms of color uh, in terms of color stability so uh, rhodolin 4188 is in general uh, we recommend it for uh, inorganic pigments uh, as it provides you know improved color acceptance uh, improved color development uh, it has reduced color floating uh, it has low water sensitivity enhances gloss and high scrub resistance Uh, the backbone of the uh, uh, the, uh, the products are the phosphate chemistry so phosphate chemistry usually uh, enhances the gloss and improves the uh, you know scrub resistance so that was from my side check thank you so much any questions All right. So, may I please request Dr. Sanjeev Navkare to please join us on stage and present a memento. Can we please give him a big hand, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much.